Today, our Sunday School lesson back in the Old Testament, we're looking at King Nebuchadnezzar's dream and looking at a man named Daniel. Here's the Bible study found in the book of Daniel. Read the whole chapter, chapter 2. Now, this is the Bible study for older kids and adults uh, and answer those three questions that we've done the last few weeks. Daniel chapter 2. And for other kids... I will read through this on the video. Feel free to, uh, to use this video as you need. Uh, you can mute the video and read it on your own. Have your parents read it. Um, just do whatever works for you, but I will read along. <clears throat> we begin. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had taken over the land of Judah and brought many of the Jews back to Babylon as captives. Among the captives were Daniel and three of his friends. These four young men were being trained to serve in the king's court. There on your screen, you see the map there. So Babylon took over uh, the nation of Israel. And so Daniel and these three friends, they are captives. Babylon had taken them over. So one night... King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, he had a dream that troubled him deeply. He quickly sent for all his wise men and asked them to tell him the meaning of his dream. The wise men said, Your Majesty, tell us your dream, then we'll tell you what it means. The king replied, I've decided that you must first tell me what my dream was and then explain it. If you can do that, I'll reward you with riches and great honor. But if you can't, I'll have you killed. Quite the request here, right, from King Nebuchadnezzar? And the wise men said, There's not a man on earth who can do what you're asking us to do. It's impossible. I mean, that is impossible to know what his dream was. Only, only God could do that. But their answer made the king so angry that he ordered all his wise men to be killed. Yeah, King Nebuchadnezzar, he was, he, he acted in anger a lot. He didn't think things through all the time. And, and in this way, acts very wickedly and evil, very angry. Okay, now when Daniel and his three friends heard about the king's order, well, they knew that their lives also were in danger. So they asked God to tell them the king's dream. That night, God answered their prayer. In a vision, he told Daniel the king's dream and what it meant. The next morning, Daniel went to see King Nebuchadnezzar. The king asked Daniel, Can you tell me what I saw in my dream and what it means? Daniel replied, Your majesty, no man can know another person's dream. But God has revealed your dream to me because he wants to show you what is going to happen in the future. Then Daniel went on. He said, in your dream, you saw a huge statue of a man. The head was made of gold. Its chest and arms were made of silver. Its stomach and upper legs were bronze and its lower legs were iron, and its feet were part iron and part clay. All right, you see the statue on the side? The head is made of gold, the arm and chest silver, the stomach and upper legs is bronze, iron and feet, or the, uh, the feet and lower legs are iron. Very strong, very sturdy statue in his dream. Daniel continued, but then, in this dream, you saw a rock being cut out of a nearby mountainside, but no hands could be seen cutting it. That rock rolled down and struck the statue's feet, smashing them into pieces. Next, the whole statue broke into little pieces. A wind came up and blew those pieces away as if they were dust. But the rock grew until it became a great mountain that filled the whole earth. So you see the rock on your screen? The rock 
in his dream, hits the statue, and the statue falls apart. And the rock continues to grow and grow and grow and get bigger till it filled the whole earth. That was your dream, said Daniel. Now here's what it means. You, your majesty, are the head of gold. For God has given you a kingdom of great power and glory. After your rule ends, another kingdom will take your place, but it will not be as great as yours. That's the meaning of the chest in arms of silver. Then a third kingdom will rule over the world. That's the meaning of the bronze part of the statue. A fourth kingdom will at first be strong and powerful like iron, but it will have weak parts, just like the clay in the statue's feet. This kingdom will not last. Okay, so each part of the body is a kingdom. Four kingdoms. Now at the time of this fourth kingdom, God will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. Just as the rock smashed the statue to pieces, so the kingdom of God will crush all the other kingdoms. God's kingdom will grow until it fills the whole earth, and his kingdom will last forever. Okay, so God's kingdom is the rock in the dream. Then King Nebuchadnezzar said, Surely your God is the greatest of all gods, for he alone could tell me my dream and what it meant. Then, or the king then made Daniel the ruler over the most important part of his kingdom and placed him in charge of all his wise men. Okay, a couple questions. Why was King Nebuchadnezzar troubled at the start of our story? He had this dream and he didn't know what it meant. So then he went to his wise men. And what did King Nebuchadnezzar make his wise men do? <clears throat> All right, he told his wise men that they had to tell him first what his dream was, and then they could tell him the meaning of his dream. And of course, the wise men, they, they couldn't do this, right? And they said, like, only God can do this. And King Nebuchadnezzar was very angry. And he had these wise men put to death. And then Daniel knew that his life could be in danger and his friend's life could be in danger. So he acted very wisely, asked for some time. And then what did Daniel do when he heard that he was in danger? He prayed to God. He prayed to God for help. And that is something that we all should learn right all can and should do when we're in danger we can go to god because he can always help us now true or false god told daniel king nebuchadnezzar's dream true god answered daniel's prayer and he answered daniel's prayer with a yes he said here is the meaning of this dream. All right, so now let's talk about the dream. What did King Nebuchadnezzar see in his dream? All right, you remember he saw the, this big statue. There was a statue with four parts. It had a head of gold. That was Babylon. That was the king. And in his dream, he's, uh, the statue had a silver chest, bronze stomach, the iron feet, iron lower legs, feet of clay, and a rock, right off your screen, and a rock that crushed this statue. And then Daniel told King Neb Nebuchadnezzar what his dream was. All right, so what did this dream mean? mean God was showing Daniel showing King Nebuchadnezzar the future he said that each four parts of the statue was a kingdom 
and each kingdom would come to an end. But this rock, this rock was God's kingdom. God's kingdom that he would someday establish. And that kingdom would grow bigger and stronger. And that kingdom would never be destroyed. That kingdom would last forever. And you guys know who the rock is. That rock is Jesus. God sent his own son and our savior. Jesus is the rock. He is the kingdom that lasts forever. Never be destroyed. How did King Nebuchadnezzar respond to Daniel's message? He recognized God's power and made Daniel an important person in his kingdom. Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, he, he acts just all over the place. Sometimes he would recognize God, God's power and might. And then the next story, he would once again be denying God. And so he was kind of all over the place. But after uh, this dream, and Daniel tells him his dream, he recognizes uh, God's power uh, and God's wisdom in knowing all things. Okay, so let's talk about what we learn from this account. Try to think of a couple. What are, what are some things that we learn from this account? Always go to God for help, right? You know, Daniel heard that, you know, Daniel knew he was in danger. And so he was very smart. He asked for some time from the people. He's, and then where did he go to? He went straight to God. That God, please help me. And God gave him the help he needs. God will always give us the help that we need for every situation. Uh, God knows what's best for us. And so always go to him for help. God's kingdom lasts forever. Uh, probably the most important thing that we learn. Uh, God is showing King Nebuchadnezzar Daniel, and he's showing us that his kingdom will last forever. And of course, his kingdom in that picture there is a heavenly one set up in heaven where we get to live with God forever. What if God says something will happen, it will happen? Uh, depending on how old you are, you may have started to study uh, history. And these four kingdoms all, all happened. You had Babylon was the head, and Persia was another earthly kingdom. Oop, sorry about that. Then you had uh, the Greek uh, Empire, and it was the third kingdom, and then the Roman Empire was the was the legs. So you had all these different earthly kingdoms that have now come to an end. But of course, God's kingdom, Jesus the Rock, came during that last kingdom, Rome. And Jesus, well, we still have lots of people sharing God's word. His kingdom will last until the very end of time, and then it will continue to last in eternity in heaven. Some of the things that we learn in this account, maybe you came up with some others. Here are some things that I came up with for the Bible study. I'm sure you guys had some different ones. How do we see our sin? Uh, I see death, King Nebuchadnezzar putting people to death. That Death is the consequence of sin. So anytime we see death, we're reminded of our own sinfulness and that we too will die. I'm an anger and irrationality. I know how many times have I, have you, have we acted in anger? It's not smart. You know, King Nebuchadnezzar acted very angry, killed these people. It didn't make any sense to do that, but he did it anyway. Sin, when we act in anger, it doesn't make sense. We're disobeying God, and yet sometimes we fall into that trap and do it. The kingdom's end, anytime you see an end, um, limited power. Um, people of this world, we have limited power and we come to an end. How do we see our Savior? Jesus the Rock. He came, right? And his kingdom is continuing to live on. Um, his con kingdom will always continue on. How about God's deliverance? He delivers us. Um, he delivered Daniel in the way he knew best, this time sparing his life. Um, but God always delivers us. He has delivered us from sin, so we have that. We know that. 
Um, but he delivers us from our pains and troubles in this life too. God's kingdom lasts. Uh, these earthly kingdoms, like I said, you guys, older kids, you've studied these, right? Adults, these kingdoms came to an end. Babylon no longer exists. Persia, Rome, Greece, all these earthly kingdoms, well, they came to an end. But God's kingdom lasts forever. That's because of Jesus, our Savior. What does this account lead us to pray about? Many things, right? Use wisdom and have faith like Daniel. Uh, he acted very smart, thought things through, asked for more time, prayed, uh, just showing his great faith. Praise for Jesus, our rock. Always good to pray about that, right? Um, Jesus is the, is the rock who lasts forever. How about forgiveness for those times that we've sinned, shown anger, uh, disobeying God? How about entrusting God's plan? Ask for trust um, to know that God is in control of all things. He's in control of all the worldly events, just like these earthly kingdoms. He knew that their time would come to an end. Uh, God's in control of all things that happen in the world. To know that he's working for us and for what's best for us. There's a memory verse, John 8, 31, 32. If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And we have this truth, and this truth... Uh, guarantees us that we will last forever. Uh, Jesus has allowed us to be a part of his kingdom that lasts forever. We are part of the rock. Let's thank God for this and let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for uh, the, your kingdom and the, the victory that you have. And we thank you for sharing that victory with us, knowing that because of all that you have done for us, that we will live with you forever and that your kingdom will last forever. Help us to, to know that. We ask that you help us to use, uh, use wisdom to know that, to trust you, and to go to you when we need help, and to trust that you will take care of us and you will provide the help that we need in just the best way that's possible for us. Lord, we ask that you strengthen us to know this now and every day. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. God's blessings on your day.